Uh, good evening and thank you so much uh, for joining us on uh, In Focus. Uh, good, good evening, brother, and good evening to your viewers at home. Straight to it, your response to the clip that we've just watched, you've seen, you've heard what uh, John Stian Hazen has said, the declaration on the EFF, your response as the EFF to that? No, we're fine. Actually, we're happy. Uh, you know, when racists declare you as your number one enemy, you must know you're doing something right, and we're very happy with that. Uh, and, uh, and we're calling on all the fighters to say uh, we're doing well. When the races are declaring you that you are their enemy, it means we're doing, uh, we're doing something good. And uh, we're saying to all the fighters, whether you meet them on the shop floor, you meet them on the farms, on the streets, everywhere where you meet races, you must press hard. Mm -hmm. Because it looks like we're getting closer to, to make sure that uh, we, 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 we remove racism in this country. DA, it represents races. It's who they are from their own uh, policies and everything. As you could see now, they went to a conference only to come out with no policy direction or anything except to, uh, to fight the EFF, the only organization that stands firm against racism. So we're happy, let them bring it on. Uh, it means we're moving in the right direction. The Commander-in-Chief is leading us to the right direction because if they were happy with us, then we'd know that uh, it looked like we're going to sell out uh, the people of South Africa like those that... Uh, are pretending to be leading this country on behalf of racists as they do, uh, as, as they continue to do as they please in this country. Nothing has changed uh, since uh, apartheid. Uh, we thought after 1994 there's going to be changes, but uh, the caretakers that are running this country, the racists, they continue to do as they please, kill our people in the farms, treat them in, in human ways, uh, uh, do whatever they do with no accountability. Now, uh, here's an organization that is... Uh, getting them out of the kitchen in their bedrooms, and they are screaming now, making a lot of noise. So on top of them, and we're going to press hard, uh, we're not going to retreat here. So whatever TA, uh, they decided there on that conference, uh, we're, we're ready to take them head on. By the way, we're going to remove them as uh, official opposition as we're moving towards uh, the elections. We've already removed them in three uh, provinces, so that's why they are already uh, making such noise. They, are, they know that their future is... It's done. The EFF is here and we're going to take over, but we're very happy with the races declaring us as their enemy. Are, are you not worried looking ahead to a possible coalition that uh, uh, you need to start looking into friendships uh, and, and partnerships, bad mates that you'll go into should that happen? They've said to, uh, openly that no ways that they will go into a partnership with you guys. No, we don't, uh, we're not even thinking coalition. We're preparing the machinery now. We're on the ground. All our structures are ready. Uh, last year we went uh, taking all our provinces to conferences. So it's not even on our mind. We're going, for, we're going ahead full steam. We're going for total victory in 2024. We've got no time of massaging and, 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 and flirting and, and, and exchanging fake smiles with races. They've declared us their enemy and they are the enemy of the EFF themselves because as from our founding, uh, manifesto, we declare the racism as, uh, as, as part of those that are enemies of the organization. So we, we've got no interest of, uh, we won't even worry about them, or what they think about us, even coalition. We're not uh, thinking coalition now, we're thinking total uh, outright in our structures. But, but sh should an op uh, op opportunity like that arise, as we've seen in 2011, where you guys worked with, with them in, in, in other areas, is it something that you will consider, or as you say, that from their perspective where they are saying, anybody but the EFF? Look, the uh, DA, uh, I think we've played our part. We have, uh, in, and, and, and we're not uh, working with the DA. We're prioritizing our people. That is why even on the 2021 uh, local government elections, when we're closing our election campaign, the president of the EFF was very clear that these elections, because it looked like we're going to uh, have coalition government, they we're going to... Uh, I agree that we're going to put our ideologies uh, on, on the side and, and prioritize what is immediate for our people, which is service delivery. And we've done our part, and they continue uh, to insult us every corner where they, uh, they, they, they exist. Uh, unprovoked, you wake up in the morning, a DA leader is just talking nonsense about the EFF. So we, we really have no time for them. And, uh, uh, and as you could see, where, wherever we are now, wherever we see them, we remove them. Uh, so the, the, we, even ourselves... There's, there's nothing that is going to force us to, make, to work with the, with the DA. We've done our part, and now uh, the gloves are off. If they want to fight, they know that they will, they will, fight, they will find us ready. So 2024, we're not interested in talking to them. We're in, interested only on the total victory for the EFF. You, you, you did say that you're looking at taking them out as official opposition. Um, what are the moves that are you are making then to get to that? Because 
uh, we are really running out of time as far as the elections are concerned. I mean, we're talking about 15 or less months going into the elections, so the game is afoot. Look, uh, as you know, last year uh, we ran a, a successful campaign of recruiting. Uh, we recruited uh, one million membership. We put ourselves into a target, and, and that's what we do. We set the target for ourselves, and we achieve it. And we, we managed to have one million membership, uh, all of them uh, registered to vote. This year, it's a year where uh, we are on a massive political uh, education. We are on a massive uh, voter registration. Yesterday, we launched a, a voter registration campaign where we are saying, let's, let, because from our own assessment as an organization, we came to accept that the people that uh, have been voting for the EFF since 2014, uh, most of them, we found them already registered uh, by other different political parties. It's not uh, voters of our own. So we're going back to the basics to say, let's go and register our own voters that for the first time, for them to be registered uh, with the IEC, it's because of the persuasion that came from the EFF leadership, uh, ground forces, and all the structures. So we are on that campaign. We've launched it successfully yesterday in Deep Sloot, one of the biggest wars that have got a, a, a voter apathy problem. Because on that ward where we were in Deep Sloot, there's over 50,000 eligible voters, and only 17,000 are registered. So you've got a ward with 33,000 unregistered voters. So we are on that program, and we're paying attention to detail because as things stand, there's 11 million South Africans who are supposed to be uh, registered to vote and they are not, uh, they are not registered and uh, about 60% of that, 6 million, are young people uh, with the majority found here in Gauteng of 1.5 million young people here in Gauteng not registered to vote. So we are on the ground, all the words they've got, uh, they are, they, they are stairs, they are targets, they know exactly what they need to do. So we've We've taken it uh, not only to the wards, to the voting stations, uh, to the street level. We know exactly what is happening. So that is the work that we're going to be embarking on uh, for, for, for the most part of this year, to make sure that when we, uh, by beginning of next year, we've got our own voters that we ourselves as the EFF went to persuade and conscientize so well, that they are ready for election. I mean, if, if one says, but isn't that the job, Marshall, of the IEC too? go to voter registrations. Are you not effectively doing the IEC's job? Or is this the EFF saying that you feel that something is lacking as far as voter education is concerned from the IEC's, uh, IEC's perspective? Look, it's one of their mandates. But, uh, but, you, but you know the IEC them, uh, themselves from their posture sometimes and their behavior, even uh, yeah, during the election time on, on the ground, that it doesn't look like they're interested on, 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 on doing uh, that work. If you look at... Uh, the young people, the ones who are supposed to be contributing and shaping the future of this country. The ages between uh, 17 and, uh, and 21. State South Africa is saying there's close to 3 million of those people uh, from State South Africa. But if you go to the IEC uh, voters' roll, you only found about 100,000 of those people. You can see that the numbers, the IEC have lost interest. So we've taken upon to ourselves that we're the one who conducting elections. Let us go into that. The, the IEC, they, they don't do it. Every time it's either they tell you that they don't have funds, they don't have capacity, but it, does, it doesn't look like they've got interest. And our suspicion is that uh, because of uh, their proximity to, to, uh, to the ruling party and ruling party knowing that it's losing uh, voters, especially uh, young people, so uh, we don't think it's at the center even if they are planning that uh, uh, let's get uh, young people to go and register to vote because they have to contribute in, in, in shaping the future of this country. So, so they've, left, they've left them neglected like that. From, from a political party's perspective, what, where do you think the problem is in terms of why, why is there voter apathy from young people? I mean, from your vantage point as the EFF, uh, as you're saying that you will be targeting these people who have not really been interested in voting, and some could be uh, first-time uh, voters who are 17, turning 18 next year, so they would only have that, that opportunity. But where do you think the, uh, the, the voter apathy comes from? Look, there's, a, there's poor voter uh, education uh, programs in this, in, in this country, but also uh, people of this country, they've been disappointed uh, now and again with the empty promises, with corruption, with the, with the failure of, of, of the ruling party. So we have to go and, and, and dig deep and go back uh, to those people and conscientize them, speak to them, uh, tell them about the EFF, and, uh, and, 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 and make them realize that, uh, by the way, not voting, it's not a solution, because if they don't vote, those criminals with their numbers that have already been consolidated, and the racists with their numbers that have been consolidated, they're going to continue 
to run this country as it is. As you could see from the DA's posture and everyone else, they don't have a problem with the mismanagement of this country by the ANC. That's why they declare the EFF as the enemy. So uh, people, they can't give up on, on, on to themselves but uh, to the future of their children because not voting, uh, it means you have given up to the future of your own children and you cannot do that. And, and, the, and the reality is that they have to vote and vote for an alternative government because the one that they've trusted, it has lied to them, it has betrayed them, it has stolen from them. There's nothing left of the ANC uh, except that people of South Africa, they need to stand up for themselves and, and go and vote. And worse, uh, our black people, because if you look at what has transpired in Tswane, uh, Tswane now is run by racists. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's a collaboration of racist parties, not because black people in Tswane, they went to vote for Freedom Front Plus and DA and all of them. Is because they, 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 because of voter apartheid, they did not go to, to the voting stations. And that's a danger of not voting because we are not helping the situation. When they did not go and vote in Tswane, a white man is leading Tswane now. So if they do that in 2024, a white man is going to lead this country. We're going to have a white minister of land, a white minister of minerals, a white president, and we can never allow uh, 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 that situation. That is why, as the EFF, we're on the ground, paying attention to detail, going to our... Uh, voters, house to house, doing door to door and, and making sure that they register to vote. That is why even yesterday also it's uh, uh, keeping up with the times in terms of technology. Yesterday when we launched our uh, the registration campaign, we even uh, launched our USSD number to make it easier for voters to register to vote because that's, that has been another issue when we go to the ground. People say yeah, but this thing, it, it takes time. I must leave what I'm trying to do and go to a, a voting station sometime or to the IEC, and then you find that they are not there. So we've introduced an online uh, registration uh, portal for the EFF, which is star 134 star 20024 hash, where you can uh, register to vote for EFF anywhere where you are. So you don't have to drive to any voting station or IEC office. You register in your comfort zone mm. with the EFF yeah. because we are the part of the future. So we're keeping up with the times. Well. Marshall, we, 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 we're fast running out of time. But, uh, uh, you know, as you say, from what I'm picking up, uh, you, you're talking to first-time voters, younger people in this instance. What would you say are some of those key issues that you're talking to them about, especially for young people? Because, I mean, an 18-year-old who is voting for the first time next year will look at the world very different from uh, how I see them as a 48-year-old man. Yeah, look, the, what, we are, what we are bringing to, to, uh, to the young people and the people of this country, it's a real alternative that will bring a change and, and a tangible change, not some artificial change to their lives uh, when they're talking to the issues of jobs, talking to the issues of land. When young people, they want to participate. They don't want to be drawn into some uh, uh, social grant arrangements where they, they must be pushed. They, they want jobs. They want to participate. They want to start their own businesses. But if you don't have conducive uh, uh, environment, uh, policies that, uh, 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 that makes uh, barriers to entry easier, uh, for them to be able to start their own businesses and participate in, in the economy and building their own futures, uh, it becomes a problem. And the AFF is bringing that alternative through our policies, uh, the expropriation of land without compensation, nationalized strategic assets of the country, make sure that there are jobs for everyone, make, make sure that everyone participates in, uh, in, in this economy, uh, demanding that uh, they must have access to free quality education, because that is another issue that with the commercialized education, you find most of young people, as we see now, uh, that are some of them, they, they've been pushed uh, to decide the government can account for majority of those that pass metric this year, uh, because there are, there are no systems, there's no enough uh, institutions of higher learning uh, where there is. There's a lot of money that they must be paid, and our people coming from a society with millions of our people unemployed, uh, they, they end up being pushed out on participating in the economy. So it's all those things that we are, are they hearing about. you? Are they hearing you, the same people? Are definitely. They, are they, are they hearing what they the EFF is, is selling? Us. They're definitely hearing us because we are the only party since 2014 that keeps increasing our vote, and we are very patient because we want to make sure that our people, they understand the policies of the EFF. They take them to heart, and, and, and they are conscious enough. So we're not uh, rushing. We're not a popcorn organization that we want short-term gains. We are on the ground uh, conscientizing them. That is why this year we are running a full program of political education so that our people, they understand our policies, because at the end of the day, they are the ones who must go and implement and defend them.
when we've taken over this country. And uh, that is going to happen in 2024. Just, just uh, at least how we started, uh, you know, I asked you a response from uh, what John Steen Hazen has said, but the former Joburg Mayor, Dr. Mpopalazzi, says she would not have declared the EFF uh, and in political enemy number one if she had emerged victorious at the party's federal congress uh, this weekend she says that she has a different view when it comes to working with other political parties let's take a listen to this i've been very open about my ideology around these issues um, but we are a party at the end of the day. We're one political party, and even if there's internal differences, we've got to rally behind one vision. Um, I, I've, I've, I've said this before, that I've worked at the EFF in the city of Johannesburg, and we've managed to deliver services for residents. We managed to roll out mobile clinic services after they brought a motion to council, as an example, and as MMC, I implemented it, and our, our residents today still benefit from those mobile clinics. So I have a slightly different view where working with other parties is concerned, I believe it's pragmatic governance, uh, but there are people in the party who hold very strong views against it, and, and that is now the party line, and that's the line that the party will take. As we conclude, quick uh, response to that. Uh, look, uh, she's, a, she's a black person. They can try to, to pretend and fake as much as they want. All those blacks that are there in D8, happen with Musumaimane, Hemen Mashaba, Lindu Mazubu, every day they can see that they are just consumed into a racist system where they thought they can assimilate and, be, and, and, and feel comfortable working with them. And every day they show them the middle finger that you don't belong here. So she's right. Her conscious mind is tell, and her heart is telling her that actually I made, the, I, made, I made the wrong place. She must just go to a ward wherever she comes from and take the EFF membership so she can sleep peacefully because <laughs> as things stand now, uh, I'm sure the sees horrors of uh, the races that she works with and, uh, and, and, and misled her to believe that... Uh, they are party for all, which is not the truth, and it's keeping and it's doing that. It's showing them uh, a middle finger every day, one by one, and uh, and uh, and they are leaving. I think uh, right. there's only one left uh, in their leadership now, I, 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 and I don't know how long he's going to stay there because they're going to remind him that you're a black person who don't belong in this uh, party. This is a party of white people, and the owners are in charge of that party now. Marshall, we're going to have to leave there, but thank you so much for coming through to talk to us. I appreciate your time.